I am addicted to time lapse and hyperlapses. Over the year, I've done thousands of them, both with drones and with ground based cameras. It is a very creative technique, able to portray a different perspective of movement. When using drones, there are some specific factors to consider for best results. In this video, I will explain in a very simple way how to plan and shoot time-lapse and hyperlapses with all the current models of DJI prosumer line. I cannot go deep in all aspects, but I will add a link to a playlist with all the specific video covering the topic at the end of this one. The only difference between the two techniques is that for time lapses the point of view is static. In the case of drone, the aircraft will be hovering in the same position for the whole process. Time lapses are interesting where the scene already contains a good amount of interesting movement. In the case of hyperlapses, the point of view is in motion, adding extra movement to a scene. A traditional camera sitting on a sturdy tripod is perfectly suited for static time lapses, while shooting hyperlapses with it is not easy. Some sort of tool capable of moving the camera in a very precise, controlled and smooth way is needed. A motorized slider, a handheld gimbal, a train or a bus. Thanks to the very high resolution of a full-frame camera, it is also possible to add some movement to a static time-lapse in post-production, using keyframes to give the impression of a hyperlapse. Drones of the current generation are able to perform smooth control movement in all directions. They are the perfect tool for hyperlapses, like huge sliders in the sky. The point of view up in the sky offers an unexpected perspective of the scene. For this reason, with drones, in most cases, we opt for hyperlapses. Timelapses and hyperlapses need movement to captivate the audience. Simple landscapes without element in motion are better suited for photos than hyperlapses. Unless there is a very interesting movement of clouds, or a transition from day to night. Seascape can be interesting if there are several boats moving around, but the motion of the waves look, in my opinion, unappealing when it is sped up. In the case of dramatic waves in the sea, I prefer regular video, even better if in slow motion. Seascapes and urban life are often excellent choices for time lapses and hyperlapses. The movement of people, cars and other vehicles at fast speed is an excellent way to convey an idea of frantic life, excitement or a race against time. Another excellent subject is day-to-night transitions, especially in urban scenes. In this case, the presence of artificial lights adds a lot of interest, reduces the dynamic range and makes it easier to expose properly. Prosumer drone technology has improved enormously in recent years, but there are several factors to consider when planning a time-lapse or hyperlapse compared to use traditional ground-based cameras. When shooting time-lapses or hyperlapses with a full-frame camera, in most cases I choose a length of the final short movie of 12 seconds. But sometimes I prefer 25 to 30 seconds, especially for day-to-night transitions. According to the scene, I might choose an interval from one photo every second, up to one every seven or eight seconds. The shooting time needed for a time lapse varies from 10 minutes up to two hours. With drones, we don't have too many options. The battery life with the current models average about 30 minutes, and the minimum interval between shots is three seconds, due to the time needed to buffer each photo. Therefore, we are limited to time lapses or hyperlapses of a length of 12 seconds and an interval of 3 to 4 seconds, if we consider the time for the setup and for a safe return to home. A drone hovering for a time lapse has a bit of lateral drifting, which we'll show in the short movie, 
but can be in most cases fixed by stabilizing post-production. When the aircraft is moving for hyperlapse, the drifting is less evident, but in medium to strong wind there will still be some unwanted movement. After stabilizing, some warping can appear in subjects in the foreground, that seems to move independently from the rest of the scene, due to the shifting of the aircraft and to the distortion of the very wide lens. In this case, it is preferable to avoid having element too close to the camera. Ground-based cameras have bulky lenses, composed of multiple glass elements, designed to optimize performance especially when shooting in the direction of the sun. Drone lenses are much smaller and tend to develop flare, chromatic aberration and loss of detail and saturation when shooting in the direction of the sun. Even though a lot of effort has been put into the design of the lens in the latest models, high dynamic range situations and shot in the direction of the sun remain a weak point of drones compared to full frame cameras. All current DJI models have the same four modes, free, circle, course lock and waypoint. By far the most powerful is waypoint. In this mode we can fly to the location where we want the hyperlapse to start, frame the shot and hit a button on the remote controller to create the first point of emission. For that point, the position of the aircraft, the elevation and the direction of the camera are stored in memory. We then fly to the ending point, frame and add a second point. The software will handle the smooth transition between the two points. It is possible to add as many points as desired for more complex missions. We can also save a mission to use it again in different light conditions or with different settings. This is extremely useful. After a bit of practice, Waypoint mode will be the one to use on most occasions. Free mode is the one to choose for static time lapses. Circle is for obtaining a perfect orbiting movement. I only use course lock for a simple movement forward. For all other situations I find waypoint much more powerful and flexible. I have done a specific video about waypoint hyperlapses. It is made with a Mini 3 Pro but it works in the exact same way on the R2S and the Mavic 3. Click on the link on the screen for more detail. In all four modes, the length of the hyperlapse and the interval between shots must be specified. To make the most of battery life, I choose a length of 12 seconds, for a total of slightly less than 300 photos, if using a frame rate of 24 frames per second. For 300 photos, the shooting process will last 15 minutes, with an interval of one shot every 3 seconds, and 20 minutes with an interval of 4 seconds. Let's have a quick look at how different intervals modify the speed of motion in a time lapse. 3 or 4 seconds are suitable intervals when the movement comes from people walking, cars, boats, and so on. When the movement is mostly in the clouds, an interval of 4 seconds is still acceptable, although at times 5 seconds would be better. For time lapses of sunsets or sunrises in southern Europe or other places relatively close to the equator, an interval of 5 seconds is fine. In northern Europe, New England, Canada, longer interval would be ideal, but this is not possible with drones due to battery life. For hyperlapses it is crucial to always use manual exposure. The three parameters for exposure are shutter speed, aperture and ISO, but the only current DJI model with variable aperture is the Mavic 3. With the Mini 3 Pro and the R2S we can only set the other two values. 
Regarding ISO, we want to keep the value as low as possible, but the tolerance to higher values has increased significantly with recent models, so if needed we can easily push it up from 100 to 400 without losing image quality. Regarding shutter speed in time lapses and hyperlapses with drones, we want to keep the value as close as possible to one second if there are moving elements in the scene, in order to achieve the correct amount of motion blur. Motion blur is the single most important factor to control. I suggest watching my specific video about it by clicking on the link on the screen. This is what happens in a hyperlapse with a wrong shutter speed. There is absolutely no motion blur and the clip is simply unwatchable. When taking hyperlapses with drones, there is a very little room to adapt the exposure to the different light condition. This is why MD filters are absolutely needed for hyperlapses. You will find links to the one I suggest in the description below. Our DJI models are able to instantly produce auto-generated hyperlapse immediately at the end of the shooting process. The quality of those short movies has improved considerably in recent models, so beginners can use them for posting on social media. But much better results are obtained by saving the individual photos as RAW file for color grading them in a photo editor and importing the sequence in a video editor, where it is possible to reframe, zoom in and add dynamic adjustments. To edit the RAW photos I use the excellent Luminar Neo. You will find the link with a discount coupon in the description. But this will be the subject for a different video. You can click on this playlist where I have assembled different videos that go deeper into the topics treated here. In a few days I will publish a very easy to follow step by step guide on the process of making a drone time lapse and hyperlapse. I will add the link here as soon as it will be published. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you.